Finally, after two years, I run a personal best. I broke my 5K personal best. It was 13.50 from 2018, and it's now 13.48. If you understand anything about running, you'll understand that it can go backwards. It often does go backwards. And so I've ran 209 for the marathon. I've ran 6108 for the half marathon. But recently, in the last two to three years, things have been on a downward spiral and not that upward curve. And so if you find yourself in that position or you feel like you're in a bit of a rut, this video might really help. Let's talk about that 1348 5K. Let's talk about what it takes to run a personal best over 5K and how perhaps if I had the time in four weeks, I could likely take another 10 seconds off that time. How could you look into some of this stuff in your training? And let's talk about training smarter, not harder. And perhaps I trained harder over the last two years but wasn't getting personal best and now that i'm training a little bit smarter there we go that first personal best and hopefully in 10 weeks time i'll go to berlin and run another personal best for the marathon and i can start to talk about being a 209 marathoner again let's get into it let's get into the race so 5k track race my personal best was 1350 from five years ago super long time ago I was actually very fit that year. So that was the year of the European champs. I went to Berlin for the 10K. I'd ran a 10K PB. Things were in a very good place. I had, I had trained really well and really specific for track. This buildup was a lot more specific for marathon and what I could call general fitness, long-term training, general fitness, not so much specific track. Race itself, gun goes, felt fast right from the start. I had to tell myself two to three times in the first three laps to just calm the fuck down. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And I apologize for swearing, but it was like, chill. It's, it's all good. I felt tense, man. My shoulders felt tense. My breathing felt a bit like not good. Once I was able to calm things down, then I was able to get into that rhythm that led to feeling good. A lot of that psychology, calm down. Whew, big breath out, relax breath in. Once you get yourself calm, then I found myself in a nice rhythm. What happened was the race broke up quite quickly, which was very frustrating. It was windy, very, very windy on 200 meters of the track, obviously headwind, tailwind, headwind, tailwind. I was trying my best to pass people that were slowing when I had a tailwind and then sit in in the headwind but because of the people in front of me slowing well then I basically just had the oh this is too slow go round use the tailwind try to sit in this is too slow go round I wasted way too much energy doing those surges and then paid for it so then I was probably on for about 13 35 up until lap eight or nine and then it was flat out to the finish it got physical my breathing got really really gassed i felt super super out of breath but i fought my way to the finish line scraped across the line in a personal best 1348 and was delighted do i think i have a better time in me well that's what we'll talk about next okay so 1348 and if you're just racing a 5k yourself and, and you've done all this training how do you know if you got the most out of yourself well i extracted the most out of myself on the night on the day it was windy you can't you can't do anything about that you just have to deal with the conditions but what i would say is i think there's three things contribute to a call it a big race result You've got general fitness, and that's how fit are you for you in particular, as in, do you normally train five hours a week, 10 hours a week, 15 hours a week? Have you been putting in the time? What about the gym stuff? What about all the recovery stuff? Where are you from a general perspective? If you normally do 15 hours a week and you've only done six or seven, and that's relative to you, that general fitness probably isn't in its best place possible. Then you've got very specific fitness is number two and that very specific fitness is are you specifically prepared for the race that you're going to run and the goal that you want to achieve 
okay? And that's, is it a hilly course? Is it a track race? Is it a road race? Is it a marathon, a 5K, a 10K across country, a hilly marathon? Have you prepared in a way that you've got your body physically and mentally prepared for that race? So you can have all this general fitness and that can be in a really good place. Maybe you're feeling better on runs. Maybe your heart rate's lower than on runs. Maybe your threshold and your tempo stuff is the best it's ever been. But suddenly it's like, well, now you're going to run a 5K. What are the demands of the race, right? So 5K at 65 seconds per lap. How many laps in the buildup have you done at that speed? If it's a hilly race, how many miles have you ran on hills, etc.? And so that specific part is probably where I fell down a bit and we'll talk about that. The final part of this is have you raced in the build-up which helps you deal with race day better. Sometimes that's race a lower distance, maybe you can race an over distance, so a 5k, you might want to do a 3k in the build-up or you could do a 10k for strength in the build-up but it gives you that ability to handle race day a bit better because you've already done it. Racing is far, far harder than training and so to get the most out of yourself on race day before the big goal race, you'd make sure that you've raced a few times before the big goal. Where I fell down, my general fitness is in probably one of the best places it's ever been, if not the best. And that's via training smarter, not harder, which is amazing to see. But I haven't done the specific fitness for a 5K and I hadn't raced in the build-up. I haven't run on the track in four years, five years. And so the I had one of the sort of elements for a big result, but I didn't have the other two, which meant once I got to two laps, believe it or not, that's the fastest I had ran 800 this year. And then when I got to three laps, it's the quickest I've ran 1200, etc., etc. So every lap beyond lap two was a unknown territory. And that's why it's very difficult to extract the most out of yourself because you haven't been there. Some people in training might have done three times one mile. Some people might have raced a 3K quicker than they were going to run the 5K. And then literally up until seven and a half laps, you know you're good because you've already done it. That's why I do believe there was a slightly quicker time in me, as in the general fitness was in a better place than 1348. But because I didn't do the specific and because I hadn't raced, very difficult to extract that out of the body. I don't have another four or five weeks because I have to train for Berlin. If I had another four or five weeks, I could probably do one specific session, something like six times a K at 2.45 and work down to 2.40, lap jog recovery. That would be very specific psychologically. Physically, it would get really tough and breathing, it would get very tough. I'd be gassed. Then when I would go race again, I'd be much better prepared to deal with the race, okay? Finally, because I'd done a race, I just ran Morton Games 5K, well, then I'd be ticking that box as well. If I had time, in two weeks' time, I'd race a 3K, and then in four weeks' time, I'd race another 5K, and it's likely I'd run 13.30 odds. Take the wind and the rain and all that, there's good fitness there. Very happy. Train smarter, not harder. So important. This entire build-up from January has all been about seeing the time and energy and effort that I put into training and making sure that there's a guarantee return. If you were donating money and it was your own money and you were throwing it into the stock market, you'd likely be a lot more careful than you are with your time and energy when it comes to running. We just go to the track, we just go for runs, we just go to road loops, we, we wing it a lot of the time. The biggest piece of advice I could give you is start to make sure when you're doing certain sessions or if you're following a plan that the intensity makes sense and have a means to track that intensity. Of course, we're all talking about lactate and heart rate and power and all these fancy things. I have all those gadgets, they all help. But you really need to start figuring out in your own little world 
what can you start to use to make sure that when you leave the track or the road loop or you finish a run, you can tick a box that says, I definitely recovered today. I definitely worked at threshold today. I definitely worked at VO2 max effort. I didn't go harder, I didn't go easier, right at it. That's so important for extracting the absolute most out of the time that you're putting in and the effort that you're putting in. Start protecting that because it matters. We only have so much time, we only have so much energy. Start making sure that you're absorbing the absolute most out of the training that you're doing and start to follow a plan. That would help so, so much. All of this is impossible without really good recovery, really good psychology, really good strength that you have around the training so you don't get injured, so you can train more consistently. And without any of all those components, it's not possible to train your best and absorb the most out of the training that you're doing. If you want more stuff on that, go to joggingroom.com. That's why I set it up. It was the this is how to train, this is how to get the most out of your training, and this is what you should do around the training, when to eat, how to eat, how it impacts training in a good way or a negative way, and maybe you'll just start to understand why maybe your results are going down and they're not going up. Have a look at that, check that out. 1348, new 5K PB. I wanted 1330 something, I think it's there, I just didn't extract it, but I think I know why, the specific stuff, the lack of racing, the bloody wind and rain in Ireland. But look, it's a good sign of things to come. 10 weeks now to Berlin, I think five, six weeks to Antrim Half Marathon, and things are about to get pretty fucking tough. So hang in there, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, do all that lovely stuff. If you wanna check out joggingroom.com, you can training plans, all that advice about the stuff that surrounds training, but just enjoy what you're doing, but really start to have a think about that intensity control, getting the most out of your prep, and where you actually prepared for the race or the result you were trying to achieve. If not, why not start to put it in place? If you were and it didn't go the way you wanted, do you need to work on that psychology stuff? But yes, prepare yourself for the big days so that you can handle it all much better. Thanks for watching. Take care.